Hello. This presentation is prepared by Alivia Rahmatulin. And this is Nazbul Sakib. Two master students of informatics. In this video, we want to explain how and where applications like YouTube, Google Earth, Google Analytics, Google Reader, or Gmail store their data. We will explain the basic concept of Bigtable, like how Bigtable is being stored on uh, GFS, its data structure, its architecture. We will explain the edge base. Uh, we will explain its data structure as well. And finally, at the end of the presentation, we will compare both and we will draw a conclusion. Structured distributed storage system built on GFS. Bigtable stores massive sets of data from Google Reader, MySearch History, Google Earth, YouTube, Gmail, Google Analytics, and web crawlers. Basically, it can be perceived as distributed, persistent, uh, multi-dimensional sorted array in which data is accessed by a row key, column key, and a timestamp, where every column can store any name value pairs of the form like column, family, label, and string. Here, as you can see, it's data structure. The set of possible column families for a table is fixed when it is created, whereas columns like labels within the column family can be created dynamically at any time. Column families are stored close together in the distributed file system, and each big table cell, like row column, can contain multiple versions of the data that are usually stored in a decreasing timestamp order. Here, in this, two, in this diagram, I want to show two examples which are related to our university, which we specifically prepared as a use case. Each row stores information about a specific record, and the row key is a record identifier. The row name is a reverse URL. Contents column family stores page content. Anchor column family stores uh, text of any anchors that reference a page. Tom's home page is uh, referenced by Facebook and the uh, campus homepage. So the row contains columns named facebook.com and campus.tum.de. Each anchor cell has one version. Contents column has three versions. Each row range is called a tablet. Tablet is a unit of load balancing. Column names defined dynamically hold actual data themselves. If a column family represented inbound link to a page, the column name might be the URL of the page that the link is from or within the cell contents holding the link's text. Timestamp allows to have multiple versions over time as well as making it possible to expire or for garbage collection of all data. And in this example of how I want to, we want to show uh, how data is being structured. This is our second example. In the table procurements done by university, example TUM are recorded. The location, column family stores, columns relating to where the procurement occurred, whereas the inventory column family stores uh, actual products procured and their classification. Note that there are two values for location having different timestamps. Data in a big table can be stored in a denormalized fashion. For example, ties between informatics and uh, department, which both desktops could not be set. To achieve efficiency in data access, uh, data in each column family is stored together. Example, we only have to read the location column family in order to conduct traditional data cube-based analysis of procurements or only the inventory column family is needed to conduct a market basket analysis. As we can see on the picture, each table is split into different row ranges called tablets. Each tablet is managed by a tablet server that uh, stores each column family for the given row range in a separate distributed file called an SS table. Additionally, a single metadata table is managed by a metadata server and that is used to locate the tablets 
of any user table in response to a uh, read or for example write requests the metadata table on its own can be large and is also split into tablets the root tablet points to the locations of other metadata tablets big table relies on uh, gfs and uh, therefore also supports large parallel reads or in and inserts efficiently even if they are performed simultaneously on the same table random writes are equivalent to data inserts because they because of the multiple versions of each cell are maintained but are not so efficient since cell versions are stored in descending order and uh, such inserts require more work than simple file appends in the next section my teammate will talk about the h -pace. he will talk about its architecture and uh, finally we will compare the boss now we will talk about hbase what is hbase hbase means a hadoop database it is a column-oriented database management system that runs on the top of HDFS, which is Hadoop Distributed File Systems. It, will, it is well suited for sparse datasets, which are common in many big data use cases. Unlike relational database systems, it does not support a structured query language like SQL. In fact, HBase isn't a relational data store at all. HBase applications are written in Java, much like a typical MapReduce application. As a matter of fact, HBase extends the big table model, which only considers a single index. Similar to a primary key in the RDBMS world, offering the server-side hooks to implement. Flexible secondary index solutions, in addition, that provides push-down predicates, that is, filters reducing data is transferred over the network. HBase can run in three different modes. First, standalone, second, pseudo distributed, and finally, full distributed. Now, let us explain a little bit about the architecture of HBase. An HBase system comprises a set of tables. Each table contains rows and columns, much like a traditional database. Each table must have an element defined as primary key, and all access attempts to HBase table must use the primary key. An HBase column represents the attribute of an object. For example, if the table is storing diagnostic logs from servers in an environment where each row might have a log record. A typical column in such a table would be the timestamp of when the log record was written, or perhaps the server name where the record originated. It allows for many distributed, many attributes to be grouped together into what are known as column families, such that the element of a column family are all stored together. <laughs> this is different from a row-oriented relational database where all the columns of a given row are stored together. HBase provides some flexibility in addition new columns to families at any time. It makes the schema flexible and adaptable to changing application requirements. Here we want to point out few differences between Bigtable and HBase. So let us compare and contrast. HBase stores timestamps in milliseconds, Bigtable uses microseconds. On the other hand, <coughs> HBase works with Hadoop distributed file systems and Bigtable relies on GFS which is Google file system. HBase can also run on other file systems. HBase cannot map storage files into memory, Bigtable can. Bigtable has two commit slots and is able to select which one to use. In contrast, HBase has an option to skip the commit log completely on writes for performance results. HBase is an open source implementation of the Google Bigtable architecture. Bigtable enforces access control on a column family level. HBase does not. HBase is an Apache software foundation project while Bigtable comes from Google. We try to produce a comparative description on Bigtable and HBase. 
We have discussed about the definition and architecture of big table. We offered examples and illustrations to explain them widely. We have talked about age base and its usability. Finally, we showed the comparison among them. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video and could enlighten your knowledge on these topics. Thank you.